Today on Hearts of Heroes, when a Category 5 hurricane hits a coastal Florida city, complete strangers rise up to save one another. We had bath towels over our head. All of a sudden, Paul said, there goes the roof. But then the sheet rock started falling on us. I said, OK, I got to get us out of here. Then a sudden storm leaves people in one community in the path of a vicious tornado. I looked up, and then the whole roof of the church just went. And it was just like gone. And it will take some heroic and decisive action to save the staff and students of a preschool caught in the line of fire. And the tornado was hitting the nursery. You could feel the wind. Heroes don't hesitate. They just act, and they act out of sheer bravery. If any state is familiar with tropical storms, it's the state of Florida. But the Florida Panhandle had not had a major hurricane in 13 years. That was until October of 2018, when Hurricane Michael came on shore as a Cat 5. It had winds up to 160 miles per hour and storm surge up to 14 feet. Located on the Gulf Coast of Florida, Lynn Haven is a small suburb of Panama City. The area is known for its white sand beaches, crystal blue oceans, and down-home appeal. Lynn Haven is a beautiful small town. Um, we have our own little haven here. It's well manicured, and it's just a great place to live. The neighborhoods are close together. A lot of people know each other. Everybody knows their neighbors, and, and it goes throughout the entire town like that. Lots of community events. A little bit slower than out on the beach where you have all the tourists and everything else, so a little more friendly, laid back. But because it's on the Gulf of Mexico, Lynn Haven can also be known for its turbulent tropical weather. I've been through several hurricanes, and they usually were a category two or category three. Nothing major, high winds, rain, that was it. While people thought that they were prepared, Mother Nature had other plans when Hurricane Michael hit in October of 2018. The residents of Lynn Haven were expecting a heavy storm, but nothing major. However, Overnight, their worst nightmares were about to come to fruition. Paul Christensen works for the local power company and was preparing for a potentially busy workday. We have to get everything prepared and set for any hurricane. We want to make sure to get the lights on as soon as possible. But by the next morning, Michael had jumped to a Category 4 hurricane and soon would touch right into Cat 5. When emergency services and your police departments and your first responders tell people to get out of town, they need to listen. They need to go. We tried to evacuate, and out of the 160,000 people in the zones, we estimated about 20,000 left. Hurricane Michael swelled into a monster, a Category 5 with winds up to 160 miles per hour. At this point, it was too late for Paul Christensen, his wife Stacy, and their dog Ginger to escape the violent storm. It was definitely getting scary. They had already warned that if you had not evacuated at that time to hunker down. It started intensifying. The neighbors over here, their trees started falling across the street. The neighbor had a big tree that fell across the road. And all of a sudden, he said, that's it. Get in the bathtub. Let's go. So we ran into the bathroom. Ginger, my husband, me, we were ready for a storm. I don't think we were ready for what was about to hit us. All of a sudden, Paul said, there goes the roof. Instantly, I could feel rain, wind. I could hear the living room being churned, just <laughs> But then the sheet rock started falling on us. I said, OK, I got to get us out of here. With their home crumbling around them, Paul and Stacy's only hope was to seek refuge in one of their vehicles. But they now faced another dilemma. When we got to the garage, it was collapsed on both vehicles, so we had to crawl into it. And her car was gone. and. My truck was still somewhat OK. The front windshield was smashed, so we had crawling glass. And we just kind of waited in there. My ceiling started falling in. Um, we heard trees falling. Suddenly, my son yelled at me again, get away from the window. And the window blew. And the storm was at the fiercest that it had ever been. I don't really know how to explain it. You just hear this really loud, uh, roaring noise. Winds just whipping everything around. It was honestly, it was really scary. For 
For more than two hours, the hurricane battered the homes up and down their street. Eventually, the storm subsided, but the damage to the neighborhood was unimaginable. The neighborhood is no more. That's when my husband noticed a house across the street. The house had fallen in. We went outside. I, all I heard was, I see brake lights, and we looked across at the house, and everybody started running to help them. When we heard the voices of the neighbors looking around and looking at the different houses, it was a complete sense of relief. I had opened the door, so the lights came on, and I was yelling to let them know where we were. My husband and my son were, and a couple of other men were just ripping stuff away, and I was just kind of standing back waiting because I knew there was a woman in there. Stacy and Paul were finally rescued from their collapsing garage. They sustained some injuries, but they had survived. As they came out, Stacy came out with Ginger. The look of, I don't know, you have to say horror on her face. And I just grabbed her and hugged her. I mean, to watch somebody lose everything they had in a matter of hours, I knew this was going to be tough on her. The residents of Lynn Haven had courageously made it through Hurricane Michael. But with so much damage to their community, they faced the daunting task of cleaning up and rebuilding. Coming up, how the Gulf Coast rebuilds following one of the most destructive hurricanes in history. We've got to find a way to fix that. We've got students that have no place to live. They may not even have the resources to leave town. But first, something to keep you safe. Emergencies and disasters can strike quickly and often without warning. They can force you to evacuate your neighborhood or potentially be confined to your home or other structure for some time until help can arrive. To ensure the greatest amount of safety for you and your family, prepare in advance by making a safety plan and rehearsing it with your loved ones. You should also put together a preparedness kit complete with water, food, and medical essentials. Knowing what to do in case of natural disaster is your responsibility. Prepare now so you'll have the greatest chance of securing safety. On October 10th, 2018, Hurricane Michael ripped the town of Lynn Haven, Florida to shreds. Paul and Stacy Christensen had survived the hurricane, but now had to come to grips with the fact that they no longer had a home. Fortunately, their neighbors came to the rescue. We had the Weavers, really nice neighbors. They were nice enough to uh, let us stay with them. We had no clothes, no shoes, except what we had on. And they stayed for a couple days. Um, he went back and forth to like Gulf Power to see what was going on with his job and whatnot. But they were able to get his truck out after one point and then get out of town for a bit. You see this time and time again. In the worst of situations, the best of humanity comes out. This was a perfect example of neighbors helping neighbors. Everybody being so close in neighborhoods and, you know, being that small bedroom community, everybody's pitching in together. Everybody's helping everybody. Months after the hurricane, Paul, Stacy, and Ginger are making plans to rebuild on the same lot where their home used to be. That's where our driveway was. This is where we had to get into the garage right here. And while it was one of the most terrifying experiences of their lives, they will forever be grateful for the kindness of the Weavers. My biggest thing for the weavers would just be thank you. Thank you for taking us in, for seeing what we needed, and I can't wait to be your guys' neighbor again. I'm so glad that they're gonna rebuild because I told her we're like friends now and I consider Ginger my baby. I loved on her, I took her for walks, and I think Stacy saw that I loved her baby. Meanwhile, Gulf Coast College president, John Holdnack, also found his campus ravaged by Hurricane Michael. The impact on this campus was pretty significant. John knew it was vitally important to get the college up and running again, not just for the students, but for the staff whose livelihood depended on it. We can replace everything that you see around us. What I can't replace is the 400 full-time and 400 part-time employees that I have. John turned to our sponsor, Belfort, to help in the cleanup process. The rebuilding process here is first and foremost to get all the wet impact material out of here, to temporarily cover the roofs so that we don't have any more water impact. And then from that point, we're already starting to get ready for the repair process. Gulf Coast College is confident that they're gonna be up and running in just a matter of weeks. It's not just fixing a roof or, or redoing the drywall. It's getting these students back in so they feel like back where they were before the hurricane happened. 
Coming up, a deadly tornado leaves people in one town racing for the worst. I can just feel things hitting the side of my car, and it sounded like someone was standing on the side of the car with a sledgehammer. Tornadoes form quickly, so when you're in a tornado watch and the conditions are ripe for tornadoes, you have to have your plan and prepare. That's a key to survival. Thankfully, they had both of those things in Paducah, Kentucky at a preschool before it was hit by an EF2 tornado. Right at the western tip of Kentucky, just across the state line from Illinois, sits the city of Paducah. Because it's located at the confluence of Tennessee and Ohio rivers, Paducah was an important hub of trade and transportation. But today, the city is known for a different reason. Paducah is the quilt capital of the world, so we have a lot of people from all around the world come and see our quilt museum. But I think a lot of people come here just to raise families and just live in that family environment. During the spring and summer months, the lakes and the waterways offer a wide array of recreational pastimes. And while the weather remains fairly mild throughout the year, Paducah can see severe weather in spring and summer. Maybe starting five years ago, um, right across the river in Brookport, Illinois, they had a tornado that did significant damage. I hadn't never been close to one, part of one. <laughs> so, and I was the type of person that tornado warning would come out and I'd be like, we're okay. <laughs> it's no big deal, it won't happen. <laughs> But that would all change on the morning of March 14th, 2019 for the parents, students, and staff of Mount Zion Preschool. As I came in, one of the teachers, she had said that there was a tornado warning in her town. And I thought, I did, it didn't seem like there was a tornado. I knew they were predicting storms, but I had no indication it was gonna be anything like that. Weather can change in an instant. So it's important that no matter what it looks like outside, you pay close attention to storm warnings, especially when they are predicting severe weather like a tornado. By the time parents were sending their children off to school, Paducah's tornado warning system started sounding. So I went out and looked up in the sky, you know, to see the tornado or to see what was going on. It didn't look bad, the, the sirens shut off. So I thought it was over with and just, you know, a warning. As soon as he pulled out, I would say three minutes for the first time ever, our house alarm went off, notifying that there was a tornado in the area. Ryan and his daughters were now heading toward the school and right into the path of an EF2 tornado. Driving down the road, and it was kind of sprinkling, raining, you know, dark outside. With an EF2 tornado looming, Sergeant Ryan Wilcutt of the McCracken County Sheriff's Department had been dispatched to Paducah as an emergency precaution. We were just in the area staging just in case they needed assistance or there was injuries or houses, you know, or traffic control, whatever was needed. And then another tornado warning came into the area. Sergeant Wilcutt made it to the church parking lot in front of the preschool. They told me on the radio that it was about five miles to the west on the radar. So I thought to myself, I'm not going any further. I'm going to stay here. When it was clear that things were growing more dire, Michelle Rushing and Emma Chapman ushered students and staff into a safe room within the school. By then, all the kids were in the room. Of course, it was all set up with centers, and so they were, they were all just kind of going and playing. Then Emma and I had gone back out. Within moments, the tornado struck. As we were in the hallway, the power went out, and we were like, we got to get in the room. And so as we went down the hallway, that's when we felt the wind. I got probably 30 feet from the entrance of the school. And all of a sudden, the wind just picked up, and the whole roof of the church just went. And it was just like gone. The storm came, hit me right then, and blew out all my windows on the side of my car. And it sounded like someone was standing on the side of the car hitting me with a sledgehammer. Coming up, with their school being ripped apart, the students and staff are at the mercy of Mother Nature. We were fixing to go through the door and my hair was sucking backwards. My thought was, you know, how am I gonna get through this door? But first, another safety tip. Tornadoes can seemingly come out of nowhere and cause catastrophic damage. But by paying attention, you have the best chance against Mother Nature's worst. Whether warning systems like outdoor sirens, Local television, radio stations, cell phone apps, and even weather radios are there to help you prepare and to be safe. Pay attention and heed those warnings. It could make all the difference in the world. A 
On the morning of March 14, 2019, an EF2 tornado struck the city of Paducah, Kentucky. The storm made a beeline for Mount Zion Church and its preschool, endangering the lives of people both inside and outside. Joelle Long's husband, Ryan, had just pulled up to the school when the tornado hit. I get a call from my husband. He is in the parking lot with my daughters, in the car with no cover, and he just said, Joe, I don't know what we're gonna do. And then we lost connection. We're sitting there and the car's shaking and my girls didn't know anything was going on. I saw the, you know, the roof of the church go. The powerful tornado was tearing the school apart. Emma Chapman and Michelle Rushing found themselves in a hallway outside the safe room. You could feel the wind. I remember feeling it hit my legs and thinking, this isn't good. Emma and I were fixing to go through the door and my hair was sucking backwards. My thought was, you know, how am I going to get through this door, you know, and uh, we made it. As the women found shelter in the safe room, Sergeant Ryan Wilcutt was trapped in his patrol car outside the school. I could hear debris just slamming against the side of my car, and uh, now that I didn't have any windows, I didn't know if someone was going to come inside and hit me, and I just kind of covered my head and prayed that it would pass quickly so I could get out of this parking lot and get somewhere safe. As tornadoes do, the storm hit quickly and was over. The trees and the power lines were all across the road. There was pieces of roof and wood and all this debris from the roof of this church just everywhere. Sergeant Wilka immediately went to check on the staff and students of the preschool. And while most of the school was ripped apart, the safe room was virtually untouched. The first moments were actually shock as I walked down the hallway and saw the debris. When I got down to the doors of the sanctuary and looked up and I saw the sky, <laughs> that was, it was like, wow. Witnessing the destruction from outside, Ryan Long knows how incredible it was that there were no injuries to the children or staff. For all of those kids uh, to survive in that school is just amazing. And for those teachers to be on their toes like that and to do what they did, it's just, it's just amazing. Recently, Sheldon Yellen from our sponsor, Belfour, had a chance to thank a few heroes within that storm. Obviously, behind you, the structure's gone, the sanctuary's gone. What is it gonna mean to you and to the community to see this being rebuilt and once again, providing to the entire community? I know it will be bigger and better to hold more people and to reach out to more people and help the whole community. Did you ever think that doing what you do every day, that you'd be faced with a situation like this where you'd be responsible for the safety, really the life and safety, of 40 children under the age of five years old. It's one of those things you always train for that you hope that you never have to use. I mean, having them know the drill that they were supposed to do and being able to keep my little girl safe means the world to me, so they're and amazing. So here we are in the interior of the building, of the facility. Did you ever think things would go as good as they did? Or was it only a theory in your mind and never, you never thought about implementation? And when I was doing my, my plan, I asked, you know, what is the safest room in the building? And they said it was this one because it's surrounded by four concrete walls. Right. So theoretically, it was the safest room. Did tears ever roll later that night when you were home? I had to come here the next day to pick up my car. And when I got out of the car, I just, yeah, it hit me really hard, like, wow. What was going through your mind? Just couldn't believe that we had been through that and that we all came out alive and in one piece. And nobody had a scratch. Not, not nobody. One. Not a kid, not a teacher, none of us. I mean, we were all perfectly fine. And Michelle, I'm looking at you and you're holding back tears right now. Yeah. What's going through your mind right now? I mean, just thankful you know, that I'm here to, you know, take care of my kids and see my grandbaby. You know, earlier, I asked you if you felt you were heroes. The guy said no. I'm telling you, I think you are. huge things that day. I just love those kids. Yeah, you love them and you protect them like they're your own.
In emergencies, we know we can always count on our first responders, but sometimes it's the volunteer heroes who make just as big of an impact. I'm Ginger Z. Thanks so much for watching.